Hello, welcome back to another tutorial. So today we're going to be tracing uh, two pieces of code. Both of them will be containing classes, methods, and objects. So let's get started. The first thing that you need to do whenever you have a problem like this is you need to identify the, the exact objects, attributes, and methods present in the code. So that's what we that's what we're going to do. All right. So our object here is D. We have made an object from the dog class D. So that's the first thing. Next, we have the attributes of D. Since there has been a global variable declared in the dog class, the variable is called name and the data type is string. So the object D has one attribute. And the attribute is called D.name. All right, remember back to our previous videos. This is how we reference an attribute. First, we write the object name, then we give a dot, and then we write the attribute name. So these are our attributes, and next we have methods. So how many methods do we have? We have a total of two methods in this code. One is bark, and another one is feed. All right then, so we've analyzed our code. We've got one object, one attribute, and two methods. So let's start our tracing. Okay, so in the first line of our tester code, we created the object D. So that's what we're going to write. We're going to put D into our first column. And since D has one attribute, D.name, this is going to go directly below D. All right, so I'm just putting a note here. Okay. And since there are no more, no other objects and no other attributes, this is it for our code and we just have to write output here that's it okay then so now we can start tracing we've created our object and the input that we took while creating our object is fluffy all right so where does this go if you take a look at our code you'll see that there is a constructor in this code all right this right here this is our constructor our constructor takes um, a string as an input so the string here is fluffy and I'm just going to write that okay and this dot name is equal to name so in the previous tutorial we discussed this already this dot name refers to the global variable which is basically this okay so the input that we took fluffy the input will go into this name input goes here and this dot name is equal to this input so this name here is now equal to fluffy all right so our input goes here and then it's stored into this variable here Okay, so dog D is equal to new dog Fluffy. So we're just going to have to write that D dot name is now equal to Fluffy. Okay, I hope that's clear. Next, we have to do D dot bark. Okay, so what does D dot bark mean? We're calling the bark method. And what this method does is that it prints out this statement here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to print out the statement. All 
Next, we have to do d dot feed, and the input is three. So if you notice the code, public void feed, and it takes a time as an input. So if time is greater than or equal to nine or less than or equal to eleven, or if time is greater than or equal to sixteen and less than or equal to eighteen, we'll get this output. But since three does not satisfy this condition, our output will be I'm not hungry. And that's what I'm gonna write. Okay, next we are going to call the feed method again with 10. So this one satisfies our condition because 10 is greater than 9 and less than 11. So our output will be this. It's feeding time. All right, so. Next, we have to print d.bark again. So that's. And if we continue in the same way, we will get two more outputs. One will be this, it's feeding time because we took d.feed and 17. And another one will be d.bark, which is again this one. All right then, so now we're going to be tracing this piece of code for the human class. We're going to be doing the exact same thing as we did before. First, we identify our objects. Next, we look for our attributes. And finally, we find our methods. Let's get started. All right then. So we can see in our code that there are two objects from the human class. One is called h1 and the other is called h2. Next, we can see that in our human class, there are two attributes. One is called age and that has an int type and another one is called height and that's the double type. So attributes age of type int and we have height and that's of type double okay and finally we have our methods so you won't find any methods in this piece of code so we don't need any methods here let's get started the first thing that we do like we did before is we put our object names into our tracing table so h1 is going to go there and h2 is going to go there and our output is going to go here. So h1 has two attributes, age and height. So I'm going to put h1.h here and h1.height is going to go here. The same thing we have to do for h2 because that's also, you know, an object of the human class. All right then, so we have our objects, attributes and output. Now all that's left to do is to begin tracing our code. So we made two objects here. First was h1 and next h2 h1.age is equal to 21. So we're going to set this as 21. Next, we have to do h1.height is equal to 5.5. So let's do that too. All right then, so now we're in this line. System.out.println h1.age. So we're going to print this value here, the 21 here, because that's h1.h. And that is our first output. Next, we're told to print the height of each one. Very simple. You know exactly what to do. You print 
All right then, so h2 dot height is equal to h1 dot height minus 3. So this basically means 5.5 minus 3, which is equal to 2.5. Okay, so that is equal to h2 dot height. 2.5, very good. Next, we have system dot out dot print loan. We're going to have to print h2 dot height. Okay, so we've printed our value in h2 dot height, which was 2.5, and that's in our output. Next, we have to do h2 dot age is equal to h1 dot age plus plus. So what does this basically mean? This h2 dot age is equal to h1 dot age plus plus. Observe where the double plus increment sign is. So this is basically called post increment. Here first we have to do, first we have to assign the old value of h1 dot h to h2 dot h. Alright, so since the double plus sign is after h1 dot h, the old value of h1 dot h, which is basically 21, this will be copied and pasted into h2 dot h. Alright, and then we're going to increment our h1 dot h, which will become 22. Okay then, so this is what happens during post increment. So this is basically post increment. First, we have to, you know, assign the old value of the variable and then we increment the variable. Okay, so the next line wants us to print h1 dot age. So we're going to get 22 here. And next, we're told to do h2 is equal to h1. Now, this is really important. h2 is equal to h1. What this basically means is that every, uh, every attribute of h1 has to be copied into h2. All right, so I'm putting it down in a simpler way h2 dot age will now have to equal to h1 dot age and h2 dot height will equal to h1 dot height all right so this is what h2 is equal to h1 basically means so our h1 dot age was 22 this is going to go here and our h1 dot height was 5.5 which is going to go here next we have to print our values of h2 dot h which is 22 and print our values of h2 dot height which is 5.5 next we have to increment h2 dot h so since there is no assigning here, we just directly increment h2 dot h. So this will become 23. Next, we have to increment h2 dot height. So this will become 6.5. And then we print our values for h1. All right then. So we're going to get 22 here and 5.5 here. Now observe this line. We're almost at the end. H1 dot age is equal to plus plus H2 dot age. So what we have to do here is exactly opposite to the post increment. First, we increment H2 dot age. And then we assign the value 
to h1.h. All right, so this is exactly the opposite of post increment. This is pre increment. Okay, then. So h2.h was 23. This will become 24 now. And we're going to have to assign that to h1. So this will become 24. All right, and finally, what we're told to do is print the values of age and height for H2. So we get 24, and then we get 6.5. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I hope you understood all of the concepts that we discussed today.